But anyway, I, uh, I've, I've been single for a while and I, like last year I got really desperate. And you know when you get into those like desperate like stages as women, you start to do shit that you never thought you'd do, right? And my best friend, she told me, she was like, Eleanor, you know, you've been single, lonely, depressed, without sex. Why don't you just get paid for it? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, why don't you go on sugardaddy.com? I was like, what kind of friend are you? <laughs> because I'm desperate, I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it, right? Because you hear these stories about sugardaddy.com, you hear these stories and she's always like, yeah, hi, I'm Becky, and I went on a date with this guy called Victor, and he paid for my entire college tuition fees and just gave me $10,000 in cash. It's that easy. It's not that easy, guys. Um, <laughs> So I went on to sugardaddy.com. For those of you who don't know what sugardaddy.com is, it's a website where young, good-looking girls, thank you, go on a website <laughs> and find themselves some old dude to pay for your lifestyle, right? So I went on there, I logged on, and I matched with this guy called Happy Daddy 62 right? And I was like, it'll be fine, because he's happy. <laughs> it's not fine. So we started chatting and things were going really well. This is when I was living in Germany. He was living in London, he was from London. And, uh, and I was like, you know, we're chatting, we're having intelligent conversations, things are going really well, right? And then like after about four weeks of chatting, he messaged me and he's like, Eleanor, why did we meet up? Why don't we finally meet? But why don't we meet in a central location? Why don't I fly you to Paris for the weekend? I was like, oh. Now, you can tell that half of the room is on board for this. <laughs> The other half is like, bitch, you're about to get murdered. Yeah. <laughs> I know I was thinking the same thing, right? But hey, there's worse places to die than Paris, am I right? right? Saw my body floating down the canal, like, oh my God, I look hot. <laughs> okay. So I flew to Paris, guys. I did it. I flew to Paris, oh, to meet Happy Daddy 62. And I'm sitting there in the lobby waiting for him to walk in. And I'm just thinking like, Eleanor, all you gotta do is you just gotta spend one night with this guy. Just one night, one night. You don't have to have sex. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Eleanor will be fine. And I'm sitting there waiting for him to walk in. He walks in. I took one look at him and I was like, ugh. He did not look like his photos. He looked exactly like my father, right? I know. And I was like, I know I've got, bad, I've got daddy issues, but not that bad, okay? <laughs> So he's there and I'm thinking like, how am I gonna get out of this? How am I gonna get out of this date? Because I am too nice. I stay on dates way longer than I have to. And I think a lot of women, we're quite accommodating and we'll do that. Maybe not, I don't think, if Americans, you guys are very confident and you'll be like, fuck that and just walk out, right? <laughs> but as an Australian, I'm insecure. I'm like, I don't know, maybe, I don't wanna hurt his feelings. Cause what if he dies? Cause he's old, I don't know, right? <laughs> Right? I was thinking like, fuck, I'm like, I'm thinking like, okay, I've got to get out of this date, but how am I going to do it, right? How am I going to say, I don't want to hurt his feelings. So then I started thinking, I'm like, why don't I make myself so physically and mentally repulsive for this guy that he won't like me and he'll decide that he doesn't want to be with me, right? Now, I don't know if anyone here has ever done that, but it is fucking fun and you should try it, ladies, right? Because I was living my best feminist life, like no makeup, man spreading. I'm like, oh, men can do it, so can I, yeah. Right, we'd go for walks and I'd speak, I'd speak in my obnoxious Australian accent. I was like, oh yeah, let's go over there. <laughs> Dogs just turned up. I'm like, where did they come from? I don't know, right? But none of this was working, right? None of this was working. I'm thinking, fuck, I've got to step it up a level, right? So we went down to the Eiffel Tower. We're walking around the Eiffel Tower, super romantic. And he bought me a coffee. Now, coffee makes me burp. And I was like, I took a sip and I was like, ugh. And I just saw this like tinge of disgust flash across his face and I was like, yes. <laughs> uh. He's like, mm. and I'm like, uh. He's like, oh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's fine, Eleanor, it's, it's fine, it's, um, it's, it's just air. And I was like, yeah, it's just air. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was horrible. But none of it, again, and, he, and then he was like, after that, he's like, oh, Eleanor, I just love how down to earth you are. I just love that you don't give a fuck. Like Australians, they're so great like that. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> how am I gonna do it, right? And then he said to me, he was like, Eleanor, I've booked the most amazing Michelin star restaurant for us to go to tonight. And it's famous for its fondue cheeses. And I was like, oh my God, fuck yes. <laughs> because I love cheese. I love cheese so much that I feel like I'm in a relationship with cheese. Because the only balls that I've been sucking on lately have been mozzarella, am I right? <laughs> but it's an abusive relationship because I'm lactose intolerant. Mm. 
So when he said, do you want to go for cheese? I thought back to that quaint little Parisian boutique hotel room with the cardboard thin walls and the one bathroom. And I was like, this is my way out. So we go for cheese and I'm shoveling it in my face because I haven't eaten cheese in two years at this point. Am I eating it? I'm like, oh, this is great, right? And then I'm burping, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> And then at the end, now for anyone who has a lactose intolerance, they will know how long you have until you have to get to a bathroom. <laughs> for me, it's 30 minutes. So he pays the bill, I'm sweating, I'm thinking, like, fuck, we gotta hurry up, right? And he's like, oh, why don't we go for a walk around the Sacre Coeur? And I was like, no, nah, let's go back to the hotel room. And he's like, you want to go back to the hotel room? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, ah. Oh. Because he thought he was going to get sex. I was like, little do you know. <laughs> so we're running. We're both of us are like really quickly walking back to the hotel room. And we get back to the hotel room. And I close the door behind me. And I turn around to see him standing there with these like loved up puppy sick eyes. The kind of eyes that if you like a guy, you're like, oh my God. But if you don't like a guy, you're like, <laughs> And he was looking at me and he's like, Eleanor, I've just had the most incredible day with you today. And I, I really think that this arrangement between us could work. And I was like, <laughs> No, Eleanor, I really, I really, what I can do is I can draw up a contract where I pay you in exchange for intimacy. And I was like, <laughs> He's like, Eleanor, may I kiss you? And I was like, one moment. And I ran all of four steps to the bathroom, just farting like, <laughs> right. Now, Paul and I don't want to go into gory details, but all I can say is that my ass cheeks parted like Moses parting the Red Sea. And what came out looked like the Mekong River. It was fucking disgusting, right? Because I'm there like breathing, like I'm in pregnancy. I'm like, <laughs> everything's gonna be, everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. Eleanor, it's gonna be fine. Like grabbing anything to put under my nose to make the smell go away. Because sometimes we like our own smell. We do. I'm going to put it out there, right? And I know some ladies here are like, I don't know what she's talking about. I never poo. I never fart. I never do. I'm a lady, right? But sometimes we do. We like our own smell. And like, because normally you're like there and you're like, oh, lovely job. You're like Jamie Oliver. Like, oh, lovely job. I really like the mix of the, the Merlot with the walnuts. So it was a really nice combination. Between the wine and the but at this stage, I turn into Gordon Ramsay, right? I was like, what the fuck? It was disgusting and I was not being quiet, right? And I finished and I got up and I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> and I had to do that weird walk to the door where you're like, oh, this is legs, right? And I got to the door and I opened it so forcefully. I was like, <laughs> and I stood there looking so skinny. <laughs> and then everything went into slow motion, guys. Because the waft. from behind me was coming, right? Like a fucking tsunami. And there was nowhere for him to hide. And I could see the fear flash across his eyes. And I was like, yes. And his eyes darted to the door and he was like, and I'm like, you're not gonna make it, no. And then it hit his nostrils and he was like, Ugh. I just saw him convulse and I just looked him dead in the eye and I was like, it's just air. And I never saw him again after that. Ah! <laughs>